Since the dawn of cinema, filmmakers have aspired to push boundaries in terms of how we tell stories visually. Whether it be experimenting with visual effects, the addition of sound, even animation, people have always wanted to find out how many different ways they can tell a story. Now, as you can tell, some of these quote-unquote experiments don't sound as necessarily impressive now as they did, say, whenever they were a big deal. Usually, if an experiment works, it continues to evolve, people join in, and all of a sudden you're an influencer. If it doesn't, it comes off as gimmicky and you rarely hear about it being used again. There's one style of filmmaking that has been around for a minute now, but hasn't necessarily been popularized. It's a style that still blows the minds of audience members today, but for good reason isn't the norm in filmmaking. This style is the one-shot film. If you're unfamiliar and too stupid to figure out what it is just based off its name, a one-shot film is a film made to look like it was all one shot. But what people don't emphasize enough when discussing this style is the story limitation that inevitably comes with it. If you're doing this style, your film has to be in real time, so if your film is two hours long, that story happens in the span of two hours. This is interesting to me, and I thought that now more than ever would be a great time to acknowledge this style by highlighting three of, in my opinion, the most popular slash impressive uses of this technique. You can't talk about one shot films without mentioning the one that started it all. Rope, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Have you heard of the guy? Before our boy Alf made Psycho, Rear Window, Vertigo, you get the point, he made Rope in 1948. Rope is the story of two men hosting a dinner party. The fun quirky little twist is that they murdered a man with a rope in that room shortly before the event. What's interesting about Rope is that it's based off a play by Patrick Hamilton in 1929 under the same name. I feel like with something like this it's easy to pass it off as like, well, why don't they just film the play? Hitchcock threw that idea out the window and went the fun route, playing with different camera angles and utilizing the freedom that comes with filmmaking to his advantage. With the combination of interesting angles and camera movement, he was able to make a very gripping experience, despite all taking place in the same location. Similar to a lot of these films, Rope was, get this, not actually all one shot. It was done in a series of 10 minute takes, finding creative ways of editing them together to create the illusion of a single continuous shot. I love talking about Rope because it is a great example of how a one shot film works with suspense, especially coming from someone like Alf. Being in the same room as a dead body and people who aren't supposed to know about that dead body is already enough to make things tense. Imagine not being able to escape that time frame. With a lot of films that utilize this technique, a lot of critics and people working on the film will ask, why? It's impressive, but why is it being used? Why is it worth the extra effort? Well, Rope is a great example of a film that would not be nearly as suspenseful if not for this technique. Now, Rope at the time was known as something pretty experimental, especially if we're talking big budget features. Not a lot of films took that risk, or I should say wanted to take that risk. For budgetary reasons, and honestly for the sake of creative freedom, while Rope is still admired today, the style of filmmaking wasn't by any means a new way of doing it. For almost another 50 years, a few independent filmmakers experimented with the style, but nothing hit that same level of mainstream appeal until much later. Whenever a one-take film was made, it was definitely used in a more traumatic way as opposed to an entertaining gimmick. I haven't seen all these films, a lot of them aren't even available online, I'm sure they're great, but it wasn't until 2014 that we got something that grabbed everybody's attention again. That 2014 film was Birdman, directed by Alejandro Iñárritu. Birdman is the story of an actor who used to play a superhero and is now trying to make a comeback back through theater. It's an intimate look into the life of this actor, so in other words, while there are moments of suspense, this film takes a more dramatic approach than Rope, despite this film being categorized as a comedy. My point is this film uses the one shot in a way unlike what we're used to while still feeling very significant. In an interview with Variety, Inyaritu says that he chooses the one shot approach because we live our lives with no editing, later elaborating by saying, from the time we open our eyes we live in steady cam form, and the only editing is when we talk about our lives or remember things. So I wanted this character to to be submerged in that inescapable reality, and the audience has to live these desperate three days alongside him. While a little on the corny side, Inyoritu has a point. He's emphasizing how the concept of a one-shot sequence can create an extremely immersive experience, something that can help create a sense of perspective for whoever our protagonist is. By following our main character for prolonged periods of time, we feel the pacing he goes through. Whereas a cut might break up this tension for the sake of comfortability, Birdman refuses. Everything that stresses out him does the same to us. Birdman has great performances, writing, and who could forget that aggressively minimalist score, but it's a film that simply wouldn't be what it is without the one shot. Shortly after that, Birdman won Best Picture, and after that, filming in one shot wasn't necessarily a risky experimental choice anymore. Most recently, we have a combo that feels long overdue, as the one shot technique is introduced into the war film with 1917 directed by Sam Mendes. After Birdman, the only one shot film to ever win Best Picture that I know of, people have started to categorize films that use this technique into Oscar bait. 
it. 1917 has definitely been criticized for this. People were asking why was this choice made, a question that has been asked since Rope. So much so that even Roger Deakins, the director of photography, asked that question himself when signing on to the project. At the end of the day, I think this choice enhances what this film wants to say and uses it in a pretty original way compared to what I'm used to with this technique. As mentioned earlier, the real-time aspect of using one shot is always going to be there, but never has it been as significant to the storytelling as it is in 1917. In an interview with Popcorn, Mendez mentions how with this film he wanted to portray the quote-unquote accidental moments of heroism. He strips the traditional war film down from being an action blockbuster to being moments of real human experience. By choosing to make the film one shot, Mendez was able to recognize those moments in between the violence, those moments of brotherhood and reflection. With that, he's able to emphasize the brevity of these moments. Despite how long they feel in the actual film, they might only feel like that because we've been moving at such a fast speed the entire time. But in reality, in the context of an actual war, a 10 minute moment of silence to grieve is a small fraction of your time spent in that situation. I disagree with a lot of people who look at 1917 as a film simply using this technique as a way to win Oscars. Especially in the context of this technique's history in cinema, I think 1917 is using it to its fullest advantage. It's the perfect story and moment in the film industry to utilize it. At this point, I feel so used to seeing films with huge budgets utilizing location changes with casts larger than their runtimes as a means of building to something. It's refreshing to see a story that feels larger than that using one person and a series of much quieter moments to give me that emotional ride. It utilizes this technique as a way of creating suspense, as a way of creating empathy, and as a way of creating character growth. One-shot films are great to me because I truly will never stop finding the enjoyment that comes with watching them. They hit that sweet spot by being too hard to make, thus making them kind of a rare thing. My point is I can't wait to see whatever filmmaker decides to step up to the challenge next. As always, thank you so much for watching. Check out these films and form your own opinion, and I'll see you guys in the next one.